Yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll we'll get to the next topic. And this is one that I've been waiting to get to, and I'm sure you all been waiting to hear my thoughts on it. Um, uh, no, it's not that serious. I've never done radio. Um, uh, when I was in journalism school, I interned at a radio station as well as a newspaper. But no, I have never done radio. That's something. Hopefully, I'll get to do at some point. Um, yeah, but let's go ahead and uh, where were we? So yes. <laughs> bye bye darvin ham let's talk about that so here we go all right i'm, I'm about to bring it y'all know what time this is the lakers as we know got gentlemen swept out of the playoffs in the first round and this is very odd to me being that the quote-unquote goat or at least that's what a, a bunch of people try to tell me was on this team and he's playing the best ever we've seen at age 39 right that's all everybody's raving about he's the best ever at age 39 blah 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 so Anthony Davis played 76 games this year. Shout to him, the guy they call street clothes, a guy whose durability is constantly being questioned. Um, another guy who was dangerously close to being made a LeBron scapegoat. And yes, you know what it is. And we'll get to more of that in terms of the scapegoating and it's coming. Just trust me. <laughs> but back to AD this season, he played the most games he's played since he was in new Orleans in the 2017 season. And on this year, he was getting what, uh, 25 and 13. Um, yeah, definitely. Darvin Ham got done dirty, man. <laughs> cool. Definitely will take your call, man. But yeah, um, Anthony Davis averaged 25 and 13 in the regular season this year. In the playoffs, he got even better 28 and 16 on 63% shooting. Absolutely phenomenal. So no complaints there. AD did his work. This is one of the best seasons we've seen from him. An incredible playoff run. Now, LeBron can't blame him. I'm sure he was quite ready to if AD didn't show up the way he wanted him to, because that's what he does. But now let's get to the heart of this topic. Okay. Like I said earlier, the Lakers, they got gentlemen swept out of the first round of the playoffs. And as a result, somebody had to get the blame and y'all know how this goes. Well, somebody else besides LeBron, of course, because he can never, ever get the blame. And let me be clear while I say this, though, right, because I got this rep as a LeBron hater. So let me make sure I'm clear about this. LeBron actually had a great series, right? He's 28 points, nine assists, seven rebounds for the series, 39 percent from three, 57 percent from the field. So really an outstanding series overall. He always gets his numbers, doesn't he? Has anyone ever noticed that win, lose or draw? He always finds a way to get his numbers, even if they get blown out. He always finds a way to get his numbers. Keep that double digit scoring streak going. When I say double digit, I mean uh, a game where he scores in double digits. Keep that scoring streak going. He always finds a way to get his numbers and he can always say, hey, I did my part. Right. This is what we've seen from LeBron all these years. But back to the scapegoat. You know who it is. Check this out. It's our guy, Darvin Ham, right? And LeBron James clearly has one of them out of there for a while, and it finally happened. So let's look at this, right? Darvin Ham was the coach for two seasons in Los Angeles, right? Why doesn't Darvin Ham get, get some credit for taking a game from the defending champs or getting most out of an ad on the season? Get AD getting the most out of D'Lo and Austin Reeves. I, I don't know, Snead. I really don't know. <laughs> you don't have to do the ESPN qualifier. All right, man. All right. I got you. Appreciate that. But in, in, in fairness, when it comes to LeBron, here's the problem, right? You either have to worship this guy or you do have to give the qualifier before you criticize him because unlike every other player who's ever lived, he's somehow immune to criticism. Can't figure out why, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to all that. Um, so anyway, um, yeah. Now, here's the thing about um, Darvin Ham. This is interesting, okay? So Darvin Ham, obviously, he was a coach for two years in L.A. And in fairness, I'm surprised he lasted this long because I didn't think that he was going to make it out of that first season. I really didn't. I thought that um, LeBron was going to get him out of there in that first year. Now, Darvin Ham, he got hired after a 33-win season that got Frank Vogel fired. And that's after winning a championship, mind you. So this is really weird. Like, when you're on a LeBron coach team, you have no room for error, period, right? Not a LeBron coach team, a team that LeBron is on as the head, and you're the head coach. You have no room for error whatsoever. And it, that's crazy to me. But anyway, so Vogel wins a chip. He wins 33 games the next year. And they're like, yeah, get the hell out of here. So they bring in Darvin Ham, right? 
and he coaches the team to the Western Conference Finals in his first year. Outstanding achievement. Cool. This was last season. The Nuggets, they're just a bad matchup for the Lakers, right? Then this season, you see Darvin Ham coaching the Lakers to the inaugural in-season tournament title, right? So, you know, he, he's doing a little something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Sneed, Pat Riley told Bron, this is your coach, and Bron left. That's the problem. Yeah, we're we going to get to all of that. Trust me, bro. Trust me. I got you. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, so he gets them to the Western Conference Finals in his first year, Darvin Ham. Then he gets them the inaugural uh, in-season tournament title this year, right? And then we know what happened in the playoffs. All the time, though, this season, well, the second half of this season, we're hearing the rumblings that the Lakers players wanted Darvin Ham gone. And I'm pretty sure that the root of that was LeBron. So I'm wondering, with the relative success Darvin Ham had, did he suddenly forget how to coach after they won the in-season title tournament? He suddenly forgot? I mean, they were just in the Western Conference Finals a year ago. What's the deal there? Now, I can't say for sure, but I do think that the team who supposedly didn't like um, Darvin Ham, I believe that they were following LeBron's lead, um, AD and all, right? We saw LeBron disrespect his coach by ignoring him in the huddle and then walking away while Ham was still talking. Now, y'all heard me. I was just telling Sneed when he called in a little while ago, I've been watching the NBA since grade school, and I don't th I've don't. i never seen a coach do that. I I'm sorry. I've never seen a player blatantly disrespect a coach to that level. Now, I'm not going to say that we don't we that we don't know for sure because we do that there have been times like with Kobe and Jordan or whoever else where coach would draw up a play then the players get out onto the floor and what they're going to say is hey um don't worry about that get me to rock and get out the way we know that bird has done it kobe has done it jordan has done it etc the all time greats will do that but they're not going to blatantly disrespect the coach by totally ignoring him and then walking away while he's still talking in the huddle we've never seen that except of course from lebron right the goat, the king, whatever you want to call him. That's the only time we've seen him. So I didn't like that at all, but okay, cool. So what I want to do now, I'm going to share some different uh, comments on this whole situation and we'll come back and address them. All right. So the first one is from Michael Wilbon on Pardon the Interruption. So he was on there yesterday. Um, Tony Kornheiser was out. So um, Frank, Frank Isola, longtime New York sports writer, he was on there. And his comments were basically, you only got LeBron for a couple more years. Do whatever LeBron wants. Give LeBron what he wants. But, like, that whole mentality of just give him whatever he wants, that's like that's like uh, uh, praising a bad kid and rewarding them for bad behavior. You can't just give LeBron what he wants. But let's hear what Wilbon had to say in response to that. You know what? I'm angry. I've known Darvin Ham for a long time. And you're right. He's a great guy. And he's a pretty damn good coach. Because he yep. took a team that had done nothing the year before, missed the playoffs. And last year they got to the conference finals with him. And everybody had praise for him, including LeBron and Anthony Davis. And now all of a sudden they, and I'm talking about, I'm talking specifically to the two of them now. They blame him. Their, their yep. public comments are inadequate. Let me just say this. If you want to be the GOAT, you want to tell everybody you're the GOAT. You're the greatest player of all time. You want to have it on podcasts. You want to have it. Then take accountability like one. Do that. There's a, a social media thing out there now with Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. It shows them after they lost in a series. And it shows the determination. It shows them saying, nope, we weren't good enough. I wasn't good enough. There's been some of that, but there hasn't been nearly enough. If you're the GOAT, you do that. You don't blame this cryptically or backhandedly on Darvin Ham. I don't want to hear from anybody in a Laker uniform that the primary problem was Darvin Ham. Yes, LeBron and Anthony Davis were great in that series, but they weren't good enough against Denver. So take that on. GOAT carries responsibility. I don't yep. see it. In the firing of Darvin Ham, so go handpick somebody. They're not getting T. Lou. If you're the owner of the Clippers and you got way more nope. money than the Lakers and just as much That's ego, right. you right. ain't letting T. Lou walk across when you got a new stadium and you got stars. You don't need them to go to the, him to go to the Lakers. This is this is infuriating that they the hand is behind this move, Frank. It's it's yeah. it's just it's just intellectually lazy and unaccountable. Yeah. And those two guys are too great. They're Hall of Famers. You got to be better than that. So I love what Wilbon had to say here in his comments. I loved it. And if you all know me and you know the show, you know I loved it.
But my question is this, and realistically, I'm part of it too. Why do we keep expecting LeBron to do things we've never seen over 21 years? Um, can somebody let me know if you can hear me in the chat? Can you hear me in the chat? Um, it's not that serious. I think you're having issues hearing me. Uh, can you guys hear me? Let me know in the chat. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll go on from here. But yeah, why do we expect why do we expect LeBron James to uh, to do things? OK, cool. Thank you, Snead. Uh, why do we expect LeBron James to do things that we've never seen over 21 years? He doesn't take accountability. He is incapable of doing that. Utterly incapable. And I'm asking you, LeBron fans, when have we ever seen him take accountability? And I'm not talking about him taking accountability and then continuing on to immediately throw others under the bus like he did on his podcast with J.J. Reddick when he said, oh, uh, I knew I had to be 100 times better that following year in the finals, but then immediately proceeded to tell us that he didn't have enough win. He didn't have enough to win in the Dallas series, right? W where is that? He is just not going to take it on his shoulders because he isn't built that way, plain and simple. So check this out. This really like threw me off. LeBron is getting so ridiculous at this point that Kendrick Perkins, one of the biggest LeBron James pom-pom waivers in sports media, called him out about it about a month or so ago. If you remember, I don't know if you guys watch first take Kendrick Perkins was actually on national TV arguing with Shannon Sharp about who's been on LeBron's hype train. I want to use a different term, but I'm going to keep it PC. Um, he, they were arguing about who's been on the bronze hype train longer. Like, how ridiculous is that? So that should let you know how much of a LeBron pom-pom waiver Kendrick Perkins is, right? But he talked about how um, you have to get... He talked about how if you have to get the coach LeBron once, because if you don't, then your organization won't run smoothly. So you have to do what he wants, or basically... He's going to tear up your organization. Now, he didn't say that LeBron is going to tear up your organization, but he did say you have to get the coach he wants or your organization won't run smoothly. What does that tell you, right? Now, remember, LeBron, he thinks that that he knows better than everybody. And Kendrick Perkins, he said that LeBron should be the coach since he knows better than everybody. Re LeBron is the same guy who said on his podcast with J.J. Reddick, the same guy who was bragging about how he could flip plays in his head at eight years old and he can't understand why other people can't do that. Crazy, right? Coincidentally, <laughs> J.J. Redick is reported to be one of the names that could be a part of the Lakers head coaching search. Come on, man. So, like, when I heard that, I'm like, that was the whole point of this show for J.J. Redick to demonstrate how brilliant he is in X's and O's. And, of course, LeBron loves him, so that would be a perfect opportunity. I hope the Lakers aren't that stupid, right? If they were to hire J.J. Redick as a head coach. Now, quick note, why would you hire J.J. Redick as a head coach? He has no head coaching experience, and you are one of the biggest brands in uh, American sports, or really in global sports. Why would you do that? So there's that, right? Anyway, um, I, I'm just like, oh, my goodness. If the Lakers value their franchise at all, they better not make that mistake. But yeah, I, I really couldn't believe that Kendrick Perkins actually called out LeBron James. Like, that's wild. Um, so, you know, th that tells you how ridiculous it was, right? LeBron is simply a blame deflecting guy. He is incapable of being accountable. And that's not my opinion. That's what he's shown us for more than two decades. I know, I know. I'm a hater, right? I'm hating, right? Okay, so how about this? LeBron James is going into year 22, and he will now be playing for his 10th head coach in the NBA. And it would be 11 if Pat Riley had done what he wanted and fired Coach Spo. That's the crazy part. Again, not my opinion. Not my opinion. This is well documented. So if you don't believe me, because I know you LeBron fans who are watching or or whatever, um, I know you guys don't believe me. You're saying I'm just hating. That, that thing you're on right now, the internet, you can look that up and it'll be confirmed. But you know what? I got you. I got you. Check this out. Since I'm an old head hater and I'm probably just making stuff up in your mind because I wake up, according to you, every morning looking for a way to tear another black man down. That's what y'all told me, right? That's what you told me. I'll help you out because I know if you're a LeBron fan, you won't go look. So here it is. I got you. There you go. Pat Riley details how LeBron James wanted Eric Spolstra fired in 2010. And this is not some BS site either. This was on Sports Illustrated. So, you know, again, you can look that up if you want to. I know you won't, LeBron fans, but 
it's there if you think I'm lying. So that's why I made sure that I made that so you could see it. Anyway, back to LeBron in this coaching thing, okay? So here's another comment kind of talking about briefly discussing the uh, the head coaching thing. And this was Rick Buecher on The Herd with Colin Cowherd on Friday. And I was trying to figure out how many coaches has uh, LeBron had now? There was seven, I think seven or eight. Yeah, because there was, the, I feel like I'm missing one in Cleveland. There was Paul Silas, there was David Blatt, yeah. there was Ty Lu, then Spo, there's uh, Luke Walton yeah. in L.A., uh, anyway, Darvin Ham, you know. I think he could get to 10 before he's done. So there you go. So they were actually discussing that before the announcement came out that Darvin Ham was fired. So, yes, Rick Buecher, they absolutely <laughs> LeBron will absolutely get to 10 because he will start at 10 next season. Crazy, right? So I heard an interesting fact the other day. This was kind of this. This really bugged me out when I heard it. Right. LeBron, obviously, as I just said, will be playing for his 10th head coach in the NBA next season. But you know what's crazy about that? Did you know that those 10 are more head coaches than Michael Jordan played for in his entire time in the NBA, college, high school, and two Olympic team selections? That doesn't tell you something. It doesn't. There is a common denominator among all these head coaches. It's LeBron. That is the common denominator. You've been in the league 21 years, going on 22 you are going to be on your 10th head coach, and it would have been 11. That's every 2.2 years you get a new head coach. There's something going on there. And it would be worse than that if um you know you hadn't had Spo for four years and Mike Brown for five. And the funny thing is Cleveland tried to fire Mike Brown to make you happy and get you to stay there, but then you ran off and took your talents to South Beach. All right, cool, whatever. So that's, that's really interesting to see that in all. In the time, Michael Jordan's entire basketball career from high school to retiring from the NBA for good, he had less head coaches than LeBron just had in the NBA. That has to that has to say something, right? Um, David Blatt, he got fired the year after he coached LeBron and the Cleveland Cavs to the NBA Finals. They were 30 and 11. David Blatt was the all-star game coach for the East. They had the, the Cleveland had the number one seed in the East. And LeBron said, get him out of here. <laughs> right i'm not gonna go down the list of coaches lebron got fired but you can easily look that up and i'm gonna make an unpopular statement right now but hey you know me i don't care about that lebron james is a coach killer period he's a coach killer and the evidence spans across 21 nba seasons you can argue that all you want but if you did you're just being disingenuous plain and simple so Last thoughts on uh, uh, LeBron and a fired Darvin Ham from Rick Buecher. Check this out. I don't see you as this, but apparently Laker fans see you as tough on LeBron. Yes. Yeah. I, I have high expectations for him based on where we where we place him in the yeah. in this in the hierarchy of of NBA players and what he's accomplished. I so is he I, hard to coach? Hard to coach? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think ch it's a challenge. It's without question because and, he wants to sub himself in and out. And well, it's not just a, subbing himself in and out, but but you to take advantage of LeBron and what he does, you have to make your team LeBron centric. Yeah, he he very much. You said this yesterday. LeBron teams are he's the ecosystem. Yes. Kevin Durant will come and get yes, buckets. Yes. And and when when he was winning you championships, that was worth it. Then you without question. What do I need to do? What do you need, LeBron? I'm I, I'm I'm good with all that. Now the problem that I have is when it doesn't work. Like when it when they don't win a champ or he doesn't win a championship, now it's everybody else's fault. It's like no no no, we're catering to you. It's a little bit like Giannis in Milwaukee. Like we're catering to you. If it doesn't if it doesn't work, I'm not gonna blame other people. We we did what you asked us to do. We got you who you wanted to get. Like so, and there's nothing wrong with failing. It's just abdicating the responsibility of that. And so this is another case where. I just look at their roster and I look where, where LeBron is in his career. And Darvin Ham by no means was, was perfect in the job that he did, but you're not going to find somebody who's going to fix this, this roster, this group with a 39 year old LeBron James as your closer still well, and win, win a championship. That's just not realistic. 
So again, love what Rick Buecher had to say there. Uh, he kicked a lot of facts. Uh, AA Games, thanks for joining. Thanks for checking us out. Appreciate you. So, um, you know, this it's funny that you chose this perspective that this is MJ's fault because of him. LeBron kept chasing and the chain reaction. I actually did a show maybe a few weeks or a month ago asking the question. I'm not sure I believe it, but asking the question, is MJ responsible for the current state of the NBA? And I kind of touched on this thing. And um, you might want to go check that out because it actually kind of addresses your your quote on this so your um your uh sorry your your statement on this so it's something you might want to check out and it's something worth giving some thought to because of what uh michael jordan was to the game and how dominant he was and then everyone who came after him trying to um trying to meet the bar that he raised and the level that he put the game on and i think kobe was probably the closest to do it but it really is interesting um it's not that serious, uh, serial coach killer. Yeah, he really is. And I mean, y'all y'all heard the stat. LeBron James has had more head coaches in the NBA than Michael Jordan had high school, college, NBA, and two Olympic team performances. That's absurd. I mean, I can't find any other way to say it. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to leave it right there. There's not really much more to say about it. Um, definitely uh, would like to take your calls and I really would love to hear from a LeBron apologist, a, Le a LeBron defender. I would like to hear you try to explain this away or tell me where you think I'm wrong or tell me what I'm missing or tell me if I'm a hater, what have you. I, I want to hear it. The number is 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. If you got a thought, hit me up. Sneed, what's good, my man? Bruce, I had to, bro. It's I, all I had good. To come back, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. So, Mike Brown, yes. Cleveland, mm -hmm. first stint. They fired him. Yes. The mo one of the most successful coaches in Cavaliers history. That's right. Mike Fratello, then Mike Brown. He, he had two sixty-win he, seasons. He had that. Right. He had that team ranked in the top five every year in defense. Mm -hmm. That's right. Every year in rebounding. That's right. Every year they were finishing deep in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And remember, he won coach of the year in Sacramento last year. So he can coach. And there and there's there's my point. He finds success away from LeBron. Mm -hmm. So you can't say LeBron was taking this guy and carrying this guy and all this other nonsense. Correct. I, I, we gotta clear this up. LeBron ain't a coach killer. He is a culture destroyer. <laughs> he will absolutely devour any type of positive positive equity a coach has with a culture developing at a, at a franchise. Mm. That's what happens. It's toxicity of the hottest, highest order. Here's what happens. He tells the coach to shut the hell up, sit down. I'm going to do this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. So now what authority does the coach have? None. That's right. Okay. Another, another thing that we see with Bron. Bron does the thing where he's the GM, does the thing where he's the coach. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem with it. And he doesn't realize what he's doing. He's snitching on himself. <laughs> what he does is you've now put a target on your back. Yes. Because you did this, you did that. Now you must produce. And if you don't, it's on you. But no, you don't want that. You want to hide behind the fact that yes. you're forcing these moves and for see what I'm saying? He will never want to be the coach because there's culpability and responsibility. Ah, uh, great point. He doesn't even like coaches. That's the right. And said, I don't need a teacher. I'll learn from experience, which means you'll lose. Mm-hmm. Because when you don't have a teacher, you are not prepared for your lessons. And that's a problem. I like your that. experience, your experience can only take you so far. But if you don't have previous experience, you're just gonna lose. That's correct. You're not I even like gonna be lot. competitive, you're gonna be outclassed. Look what happened against the Spurs. Mm -hmm. Look what happens when there's no experience. Right. Because you didn't want to listen. You didn't want to improve see he improved in Miami. He was a better player. They won a couple chips. Mm-hmm. Now, 2011 happens. Bro, how are you going to sit there on a podcast and blame? Just go ahead and name the players he blamed. Yeah, that was terrible. Are you serious? We're, I watched him pass the ball away at the most important times of those games, watching mm -hmm. D-Wade carry that team. And you're going to blame role players? So you're telling me the blame goes to Mike Miller, Udonis Haslam, like, are you serious? Think about the things that you are saying right now. 
it, it's it's absurd. I I'll be honest with you. When he does these things, he just makes himself look worse. He's a great player, an incredible talent, a unique talent. You know, I, I just don't understand the mentality. Yeah, I, there's something missing, and I've said this before. I, I truly believe, and I could be wrong, but I truly believe that he's a deeply insecure guy. Like, he knows 100%. he knows what 100%. he's missing. And, like, for instance, on one of the episodes of the Mind the Game pod, which is legitimately not a bad show if you want to pick up some basketball things, but you got to know what it comes with when you watch it and just kind of be able to compartmentalize that. But, I mean, this this is a guy who literally said, you know, he hates the term, you know, in his bag. He hates the term bag. Yeah, I know why you hate the term bag because you don't have one like the guys that they referred to when they talk about a bag. That's why you hate the term and you know that. So, yeah, it's um it's it's why he has to keep constantly trying to tell us he's the goat and have everyone else push the narrative that he's the goat, I think because he knows he's not. But Bruce, when 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 his teammates had the bag, he won. Mhm. Mhm. Because he when can he only win Dwayne a specific Wade, way. I've said that. When he had Kyrie, he won. Yes. So so the bag is what got him rings, just not his bag. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Okay. And then, then let's look at it from this angle. Let's talk about LeBron as a free agent before he went to Miami. Okay. He could have went to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Oh, he didn't he want that. Eight, he could have won eight championships in Chicago. D. Rose, Lou Aldang. Joakim Noah was still a good player. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the oh, hell. Yeah. Okay. Taj Gibson. Mm -hmm. All these guys. He could have gone there. I mean, they could have took pay cuts. Mm -hmm. it, what? They're not good enough to take pay cuts, but D. Wade is? Right. Right. See right. what I'm saying? Great so point. He could have went to Chicago. Mm -hmm. He didn't go. Why? Who was the coach? Coach Tibbs. And Coach Tibbs uh, is demanding. Okay, so accountability. Okay, That's so right. Throw Chicago out the window. Accountability and play real defense. San Antonio. He could have gone to San Antonio. They, they they were a championship team. He could have won nine rings in San Antonio. There's proof that he would have won multiple rings there. He definitely would have. multiple rings without him. So let, let me let me respond to that real quick. Um, one of the so you're talking about situations with really good coaches, and one of the arguments that LeBron fans constantly make is that he never had the benefit of having a great coach. And there's two things I say about that. One, to what we were just discussing. He can't have a great coach because he will refuse to be held accountable, one. And two, exactly. he can't have a great coach because he can't play within a system. He exactly. like, like, could you imagine trying to put him in the triangle? He couldn't do it. He can't do it. And so if you can't play within a system and you can't be held accountable, you cannot play for a great coach. And so it's it's the only thing that saved him in Miami was the fact that Pat Riley refused to submit to his will and get rid of Spolstra. Because if if this was most other organizations, Coach Paul would have been gone. Any other organization, it appears to me, because mm -hmm. I, I mean, just look around the NBA. They fire guys after good years. They fired a guy mid season this year mm -hmm. who was number two in the East or number one in the East, mm -hmm. just because Giannis said so. It's the same situation. It's not different. Right. It's the same. It's the star. It's what they want. It's what they think. Bro, you are a player. Correct. Do your damn job. I'm with you. I'm with you. Like, this is crazy. Like, it's not, and, and it's not like, oh, you just got to be a good soldier. No, you have a defined role. There's a hierarchy to these systems. Exactly. So my if biggest you issue. Success, you have to believe in that joint vision. Yes. But they deviate from the joint vision because it doesn't suit their needs or wants. I'm with you. My biggest issue with. Um, you know, I, I love the do your job mentality. Right. And some people are going to say, oh, you just you just telling these players shut up and dribble when, you know, no. they're, they're the commodity. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the reason that I don't believe in giving players like GM authority or, you know, uh, decision making power like that is because when it doesn't go right, they don't have to be held accountable. Blame. That's right. Yes. So because we we've seen LeBron make moves and then act like, oh, I don't know, I don't know anything about that. Right. We've seen him do that before. But Can we if talk I'm a about GM, single Terry Bruce, absolutely. Do you remember what he said at that press conference about Vernon Davis? Can't do it. Can't win with him. Can't win with him. That's right. Can't do it. Mm -hmm. And 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 the thing about LeBron, the enormity of the talent that he, like, when his career is over, mm -hmm. it is going to be a, an incredible statistic to count the number of Hall of Fame teammates he played with. Right. 
Right. And it's going to be absolutely staggering. And people are going to say, four rings? Yeah. I think he's got like seven top 75 teammates, which is like crazy. And we're going to say four rings? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just it just doesn't. The math ain't mathing, bro. No, it's not. It's not at all. That's a great way to put it. It's absolutely you know, not mathing. And 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 you're gonna say, well, who's got four rings? And you start looking around. Who had the talent, man? Yeah. And who had the the physical qualities? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, at any given point on an NBA court, he was the biggest. He was the fastest. Mm-hmm. In a game that was played in pace. And you know what? I have to give some, give him some props. He improved his three point shooting. This yeah, year. yeah, yeah. I've I've given him props you know, so for I that. Give definitely. Him his props to be so late in his career and kind of fixing some stuff. Mm-hmm. But his free throws for for the volume he's taken below average. Left a lot of for a wing player. That's a lot of points yeah, left on the yeah, table. Below I agree. average for for what he whether you view I view him as a point guard because he always has the ball at the top of the key. Mm. So to me, many of the possessions he's in on. He's mostly the point guard. Okay. And even as a small forward, come on, man. You can't make 78% of your free throws. Yeah, you got to do better. You, you got to do better. And, and, a lot of those, and a lot of those are coming at really important times of the game. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, there is a lot to be desired. His defensive peak was good, but short. You know, I'm looking at all these things, and it's they're, they're nuances. So when you compare guys that are called goats. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, you know, LeBron kind of is giving this up to this guy. He, this other guy, did it better. I mm-hmm. mean, it's gotten to the point where I actually had to change my opinion on LeBron, and I had to put Tim Duncan in front of him. I didn't want to do that. You know what's funny because about Tim that? Duncan I didn't... didn't play above the rim. Tim Duncan didn't dunk the ball like, you know, he didn't have the 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 MJ finishes and all. The, he does. He was not exciting. I, I didn't want to put Tim, but I have to because the, I did a show. The outcomes, bro. Yeah, I did a show maybe about three weeks ago, actually discussing that same thing, saying there's a legitimate argument that Tim Duncan is better and has had a better career than LeBron James. And I think I didn't want to have that conversation five years ago. So I think the reason that so many people don't want to do that is because Tim Duncan, to your point, his game wasn't sexy. And also, you know, the expression, the what is it? The the squeaky wheel gets the oil. I think that's it. Uh huh. So yeah, LeBron great. is LeBron yeah. is always saying, look at me. I'm the GOAT. Look what I'm doing. I did this. I did that. Right. Tim Duncan never did any of that. That was like when when LeBron was asked about, you know, if he would want a what do you call that? A um, like a, a going away campaign in his final season, whenever oh, that farewell is. Tour. Farewell tour. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And he was like, well, you know, I'm not sure. You know, I've considered just, you know, walking away like Tim Duncan. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't because you're you're an attention whore. You have to have it. It's like a drug for you. And that's fine. But don't front and say that you would even consider doing something that anyone who's watched your career for the past two decades know you would not do. But, you know. You know, you can critique LeBron's game. You can critique LeBron's career decisions. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? That, that's okay. I think some people have a hard time doing that because they're weirdos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they can't objectively look at his career. Nobody has been as empowered as LeBron. That's a fact. Because he became the face of the league at a very young age. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I still to this day as a Cleveland native and a Cleveland fan, I felt Kobe did his his job mm-hmm. and, and held up his end of the bargain with those puppets and those Nike commercials. <laughs> it was That's supposed right. to be LeBron I and forgot Kobe about that. Finals. Yeah, it was. It mm-hmm. was supposed to be LeBron and Kobe for about five years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From like 2007 to 2012. Right. That was still Kobe prime. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the, maybe not like the physical prime at the end with respect to the, the athleticism, but the skill was there. It didn't fade. So we were supposed to get some Kobe LeBron finals and LeBron couldn't get there. And it wasn't, bro, the, the, the Heat were not as highly ranked as the Cavaliers the year the Cavs went to the Eastern Conference finals. That's crazy, LeBron right? LeBron wasn't good enough yet. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? That mm-hmm. it, it was... The Cavs were finishing top three in three-point percentage, top three in defense, top three in rebounding. Mm -hmm. Just LeBron offensively wasn't good enough yet. I think that year, the year before, you, that was what, 2010 when, no, 2010, 2009, when uh, Dwight Howard and the Magic went in there and beat them. I think that was a 66-win Cavs team, if I'm not mistaken. And the like year that, before was a 63 win. Yeah, that was a really, really good Cavs team. So I, I, I they definitely had three hit. guys. 
Bruce, they had three guys shooting over 40% from three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Three, who has that? Right, right. And another guy in Delonte West who was shooting about 39. Right. Yeah, definitely. He had definitely. a lot. Yeah, he no, had a lot. And he's he always he had, had a lot, but it's never enough. Like, if you notice, that's a common refrain with me when I talk about LeBron. It's never enough. And that's not something I'm making up. That's not something not I'm all. making up. That's something that he has told us and constantly demonstrated to us. It's never enough. He he literally said it out of his own mouth. You know, a couple Bruce, episodes I back, I played that. This. Bruce, I want you to think about this. Yeah. LeBron's biggest moments in his career, mm -hmm. biggest games, biggest moments. Mm-hmm. The plays he was making, mm -hmm. they were defensive plays. Mm. Because in defense, it has nothing to do with shooting. Mm. It has nothing to do with confidence. It is being in the physical vicinity of denying an effort from another person who is forced to make the shot. LeBron's biggest moments in his career are defensive moments. That's the Orlando really, shot doesn't that matter. Way. They lost in five. Mm -hmm. or six or whatever yeah six i believe the, the, yep. the, the big shots where the in the years where the heat lost the finals they don't matter they didn't win the chip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but his biggest moments were defensive plays it's a great blocking point. tiago splitter at the rim mm -hmm. blocking andre iguodala yep. they were not offensive moments that's the a great point moments he's come up short those they talk about these clutch I don't, you know how they do the the yeah the, the clutch metrics, mm -hmm. bro. If you are if you are down one and LeBron is shooting, he's gonna miss. <laughs> if right. the game is tied, he's gonna make. Mm -hmm. There's no pressure. Mm -hmm. There's right. overtime. Yeah, it's it. It's just this, this is this is what his career has been. There's nothing to deny. It's just it. Look, Wilt Chamberlain is is one of the most incredible athletes we'll ever see Absolutely. in humanity. Yes. Okay. He couldn't get past Bill. Uh, Bill Russell. Mm -hmm. this, That's right. this is the type of stuff that happens. Welcome to humans. Right, right. Where you, where you just got to line up and play. Yeah, but he, you know he can't do that, and it is what it is. Well, okay, David Blatt. David yeah, Blatt. Successful. Mm -hmm. Very. Literally championship coach, mm -hmm. respected by everybody. LeBron shits on him. He's gone. Yeah, and he can't even get back in the league. That's the crazy part. He's it's like, over. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. He's any of these guys, I am so happy for Mike Brown. You know how nice of a guy Mike Brown is? Mm. I used to watch that guy at my local rec center coaching his kid, bro, in the season. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That is a good man. Mm. And I know for a fact that LeBron was throwing paper and all types of shit during practice and film sessions while Mike Brown is trying to coach him up. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so people want to, you know, I basketball IQ and all this. No, sir. I'm gonna I'm gonna question the basketball IQ because who the <laughs> hell, who the hell mm -hmm. takes their most least efficient shot a 30 foot pull up three? That is a turnover, sir. What type of basketball IQ doesn't understand that? Right. I think I think part of that is you know if you see that now it's because physically the the ability to constantly go past someone isn't there anymore. He can do it in spurts, but not like he used to. And so there's a lot of that's I think that's why the three point shot got so much better this year. There's a lot of energy conserved by just pulling up and shooting versus trying to drive past someone with a quick first step or, you know, raise up and bang on them at the rim. That's what I think could be wrong. But I think Anthony, it's a lot about energy Anthony confidence. Davis. Anthony Davis is the one of the most phenomenal two way players the game has ever seen. Yeah. I agree. Why are we wasting away his years and in in all this nonsense? Because LeBron has to get his. That's what it is. I mean, like he he knows he can't win anymore, but he got to his whole thing at this point, right? And again, I don't have anything for sure, like concrete, but my belief is that his whole thing at this point is he knows he's not going to win any more championships, so he's got to continue to rack up numbers. And that's why, like in these um, athletic surveys, you see year after year he's getting closer and closer to Jordan because the numbers at some point are going to be so overwhelming. It's going to be like, wow, how do we argue this? And that that's his this, that's his perspective. Let me ask you this, bro. Mm -hmm. I I personally believe he doesn't make sense as a Laker. He is the most un-Laker Laker I've ever seen. Lakers are obsessed with championships. Yeah. Lakers are obsessed with the culture, the team, the franchise. Mm -hmm. 
the prestige, the history. Yeah. He's none of those things. I, I, I don't, he's the most unlaker Laker I've ever seen. I can see it. I can see it. But maybe it's because he wasn't raised or didn't spend his formative years as a player in that culture. That That's all I can think about, but I don't know. But he went to the heat and that's what the heat became. Great point. He didn't take the good that all of his stops around the NBA he didn't take the good from those stops. Mm -hmm. This is why I said he was a culture killer. Well, the Heat survived because Pat Riley was too strong because to, to let Riley, that happen. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, listen. Thanks so much for the call, Sneed. Man, I appreciate you. Love talking with you, man. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next topic. But um, uh, stay around while we go ahead and finish this out. These next two are not nearly as long. All right, brother. All right, man. I appreciate the call. Thanks so much.